Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with help of Joe. In this video, I am going to simplify coupled movements at the knee joint. I will also cover locking and unlocking of the knee joint which is also known as screw home mechanism. At this channel, I try to simplify biomechanics for you guys and also introduce you guys to some orthopedic topics and try to make them interesting. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any videos that I upload. Let's get started. The reference time for all the topics that I cover is given down in the description. Also check me out on Instagram where I put all the pictures of my notes and also post some daily MCQs which can help you revise your biomechanics. So in this video we are going to cover coupled motions, locking and unlocking of the knee joint. So under coupled motion there is sagittal and frontal motion that occurs in the knee joint. That is in sagittal plane there is flexion and extension and in frontal plane there is abduction and adduction. So let us see how this occurs practically. So the movement occurring at the knee joint is flexion extension and also abduction adduction and that's why it's called as the coupled motion. That is it's not purely a sagittal plane movement. There is some amount of movement of abduction and adduction in the frontal plane. So why does this occur? As you can see over here the medial condyle is slightly bigger than the lateral condyle. So the axis which is there is slightly tilted on the medial side. So when the movement is occurring, the tibia starts from more lateral side and as the flexion occurs, it goes to the medial side. It starts from the lateral side and then goes to the medial side. Now obviously this difference is not that big but the difference is there. So that's why it's called as the coupled motion that is along with flexion extension there is some amount of abduction and adduction that is also occurring. Now going to the locking and unlocking of the knee joint, it is also called as screw home mechanism and it is an involuntary or non-voluntary or automatic movement that occurs in the knee joint. Although there is some research that is contradictory to this statement and it states that popliteus muscle is involved in unlocking of the knee joint. So to understand locking and unlocking of the knee joint, we should first understand what is open and closed kinematic chain. And to understand the locking and unlocking concept properly, we should know why behind this locking and unlocking. So let us start with open and closed kinematic chain. Closed kinematic chain is when your distal extremity is in contact with the ground. So when there is flexion and extension occurring at the knee joint, your tibia will be not moving and whereas femur will be moving on top of the tibia. Right, see over here, the tibia is fixed and as Joe squats down, his tibia is still fixed and the femur is moving. Whereas an open kinematic chain is when Joe is sitting and then he extends his leg and flexes his leg where femur is fixed and tibia is moving on top of femur. Another example I would like to give you would be push-ups. So if Joe is doing a push-up, his distal extremities are fixed on the ground and he'll go down and up during a push-up. But what would be an open kinematic chain exercise for this same movement? That is flexion at the shoulder joint. It would be a bench press that you see in the gym. So Joe will hold the pencil over here like this and will move the pencil up and down away from his chest and towards his chest. So that is a similar movement to doing a push-up that is he's going towards the ground and away from the ground whereas over here his hands are not fixed on the ground and he's moving the pencil towards and away from his body. Yes guys, Joe is very weak, he can just push one pencil. Hello darkness my old friend I've come to talk with you again Going to the why of locking and unlocking of the knee joint if you see the femur has medial condyle which has a bigger articulating surface compared to the lateral condyle. So what happens is when knee goes into extension the articular surface on the medial side is much more than the lateral side. 
So as it approaches the extension, the articular surface in the lateral side is already completed whereas on the medial side there is still some space. So to compensate this, the tibia starts rotating laterally in open kinematic chain whereas the femur starts rotating medially on in close kinematic chain to compensate this extra articular surface. So now that we have understood what is open and close kinematic chain, let us see locking and unlocking of the knee joint. So knee extension in sitting would be an example of open kinematic chain where the last 30 degree of extension the tibia will rotate laterally and at last 5 degrees this movement will be seen more prominently. The tibial tubercle will lodge into the intercondylar notch of the femoral condyles and the ligaments will become taut. Along with the ligament the meniscus are also tightly interposed. Then going to the unlocking that is when the tibia is laterally rotated it's called as locking and unlocking is when tibia rotates medially in the same last 30 degree when the tibia moves from extension to flexion. So the exactly opposite of this is close kinematic chain locking and unlocking at the knee joint. That is the femur over here will rotate medially because in close kinematic chain the tibia will be fixed on the ground. So the femur has to rotate and as the tibia was rotating laterally exactly opposite will happen because the tibia cannot move that is femur will rotate but on the medial side whereas over here the tibia was rotating medially over here again because of close kinematic chain tibia will be fixed and the femur will rotate exactly the opposite what the tibia was doing in the open kinematic chain that is femur will rotate laterally. Let us see this practically. So this is my femur and this is the tibia. So let us see what happens in an open kinematic chain where femur is fixed and tibia is moving. So when tibia goes into extension at last 30 degrees of extension the tibia rotates laterally and locks itself on the femoral condyles. Whereas from extension when it goes again into flexion the tibia will rotate medially in the last 30 degrees again to unlock the knee joint. The movement of locking is seen in last 5 degrees of extension to a greater extent compared to the last 30 degrees. So that was the open kinematic chain. Let's see what happens in close kinematic chain. So in close kinematic chain the tibia will be fixed and femur will be moving on top of it. So as you approach the extension, the last ranges of extension, the femur will move medially during locking of the knee joint. Whereas during unlocking the femur will move laterally. So it's the exact opposite of what the tibia does during locking and unlocking of the knee joint. So to summarize, we talked about the coupled motion that is flexion and extension taking place in the sagittal plane along with abduction and adduction. And also we talked about locking and unlocking, why it occurs and how it varies with open and closed kinematic chain. If you like my content, please share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover. Thank you for watching. I never made it, but I know how to take some motivated by a mix of emotion. Got my statement, and I'm reading slow so I can.